Ha! Ha! Again, we've done it three times in a row. Yeah, we have. And I have like, worn out like. my welcome for myself. Yep. Well, we're, this show is being done on Halloween. Let's get that out of the way right now because otherwise nobody would ever understand why Andre was dressed as a large frog. Hmm. But in any event, uh, we're doing a bunch of recipes today that, that go on forever and ever, so we can't play around and tell you funny stories and jokes. Oh, Lord, my pan's burning up. Uh, well, of course we can. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let's find out from the witch why we're doing what we're doing today. Lord. The witch is just out of control. Boy, that just, just missed Miss Doris by that much. Dear gentlemen, Pierre and I love chicken. We are, however, offended by your terminology when cooking the front side of the bird. By common and... Uh, Spit please, it out. I'm sorry, I'll get to it. In a minute. Please do not refer to them by common and trashy names <laughs> that we hear every day. I'm sure we're not the only ones who feel this way. Mm -hmm. And it's from Pierre and Gloria Love Cookie of <laughs> Airhead Manor, Intercourse, Pennsylvania. And they don't want us to call that piece of chicken by the piece of chicken's name. I'm doing breasts today. And I'm doing breasts. And uh, I'm gonna throw some in a skillet and start browning them right now, okay? That's the beginning of my, my recipe, and we gotta talk about it in a minute, is from Philadelphia from a, a guy named Edgar. <laughs> and uh, in a minute, I wanna show you his real recipe and tell you why we've had some trouble doing this one in advance. Well, well, mine is called sauteed chicken breast sent in by Julia, a fan who has no last name, of Havertown, Pennsylvania. And I gotta tell you, this is a beautiful recipe and it's fabulous, but I think it would feed 100 people. So I'm doing a half recipe today. So everything I do times two. Well, Doris and I ha are doing this one. And I gotta tell you, it, it would feed a lot of people a bunch of people. You could definitely take this to the church potluck supper. There's enough here for everything. This is a picture of Edgar's. Let me put my phone Dang. over his wrist. This is a picture of his original recipe. Now, he wrote it out, he printed it so that we could see it, but unfortunately, he didn't put in the amount of chicken. And Miss Carol had to call him up on the telephone so that we could find out how much chicken was to go in here. And then on top of that, the instruct half of the instructions were left out. Had to call her on the uh, so, call uh, on the poultry line. This this <laughs> we hope will be tasty and good. I have not made it before, and I'll tell you by the ingredients, it's instant heart attack, kids. Instant, no way you die when you eat this. Now you probably could do it uh, in a much heart healthier way, but we're going to do it the way Edgar sent it in to us today. So. Now, I'm, did you I'm, say this was sent in by Edgar Winter? No, no. <laughs> well, yeah. I use. I know you're I'm using white, white meat. trash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all the old, you know, yes. what's on the staff got that one. The younger ones, who are less than seven years old, didn't get it. Anyway, mm -hmm. well, well, let I'm me just, know when I can do. Well, something. just go right ahead. I'm just. Oh, I don't know. Sauteing brown and chicken breasts. I don't know. I guess I'm ready to do something. Well, the yeah. first thing you have to know is when you buy these chicken breasts, you've got to buy the kinds that are split open. And it's very specific about this. Now, let me show you this close-up startling overhead on the chicken cam. Now, you have a slick side, which is the outside, and you have the rough side, which is the inside. And it's very specific. They're quite severe about this. Uh -huh. You can be severely chastised if you don't do what you're supposed to. You've got to have this side up. And you've got to keep them attached because eventually you're going to fold it over. And the stuff we're going to put in there. First thing you need to do is take... Uh, did I say nude? You did. You filthy-minded thing. Can you, say, can you say nude on television? Uh, anyway, first thing you do is take some flour. It tells you specifically how much. I'm not paying much attention to this because I've got a shortcut for doing this thing. Otherwise, it'd be about a cup of flour. And you also take about a quarter of a cup of grated Parmesan cheese and add that to your flour and mix it up. Did something pop? 
I hit the spoon over here oh, on the I pan. thought something had gone off on the stove, but I'm not sure. Anyway, mix yourself up just a little bit of Parmesan cheese. That should be the greatest plenty. And, <laughs> and diddle it around in there so that you got a real nice mixture of it because you're gonna dredge your chicken in that in just a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, here's how you go about putting, the uh, next thing you gotta do is take some margarine and put it on the stove and heat it up real hot. The next thing you gotta do is get some wild rice. <laughs> it says you have to, to serve this with wild rice and I have fixed up some real fine wild rice right here. And so this is such a big blob of meat that it is an entire meal. In fact, it's not just a meat, it's two kinds of meat. It's ham or prosciutto. I'm using real ham today. This is pre-cooked, by the way. And an entire chicken breast. And by the time we get finished, it's like this big. Oh. So all you can eat with it is some rice you or some You mean we have to start doing mouth exercises? Probably so. I would get our mouth open big enough to eat this I'm thing. gonna do this a simple, where are we? I'm gonna do this a simple way. <laughs> He's hogging the camera, ladies and gentlemen. I can't get a camera when I need one. Take a little time. It gives you a specific amount. Forget that. Just take it and sprinkle it on both sides. And then the next thing you do is take some brown spicy mustard and just kind of spread some over on one side of it. That's more than it calls for, by the way. And I've got to open up some cream cheese. And from my notion, you ought to keep the cream cheese fairly firm, but you don't have to. You know, they have a little thing on the edge. It says, tear this open. And I end up with this mess every time. I think the people that designed this need to go back to the board again. There we go. Finally got that out of there. Now, what I did yesterday was just... Cut about that much. You can soften it and, and put it, apply it, but I think this is just about as easy. You know, you learn to do things once you've done a recipe and put that much in there, about two little pieces like so. And then you take a piece of ham, and I have found that it's best if you just fold it over. And then what you do next is you take that and fold it over again. And I think probably this would be a better recipe if you used toothpicks at this point. I discovered that while they don't pop open, it has a tendency to sort of go all over the place. The next thing you do is you dredge this in this Parmesan cheese and flour mix. And then you put it over here and you start, put a little salt and pepper on top of that. Okay. You put a little salt and pepper on that, and what you will do is saute, brown that on top of the stove. And then we'll come back to it. I need salt and pepper, Mr. Johnson. Okay, Mr. Johnson, can here. I have salt and pepper? Here, here. Now, you're yep, not yep. going to charge me, are you? Yes. Okay. A little salt. You don't need an awful lot of salt because you've got that Parmesan cheese in there, and it's going to make it just a little bit salty anyway. And a little salt and pepper, and start frying that on top of the stove. You'll do eight of these. That's an awful lot of meat. It really is. You can keep it. Well, I don't want them. Well, I don't want them either. I Throw them to go. I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> oh, well, I'm going to need them anyway. What am I talking about? I don't know. So anyway, now that's all you do, and you just repeat that and repeat that and repeat that until you got them all done. And we will now saute those on top of the stove until they're nice and brown. And the next big fun thing you'll have is trying to turn them over without toppling everything out of them, although I did succeed in doing that yesterday too. Johnson? Okay, thank you. Now. Follow closely. This will be complicated. There's a lot of ingredients. First, into a large bowl, we want to put a cup of raw rice, uncooked rice. Then, a cup of chicken stock. Oh, if I can get it open. There we go. Put that in. Next, a cup of water. The water will not hurt your heart. Well, that water probably will. Well, it but, might, uh, but it's going to cook. All right, a cup of water. All right, now a stick of butter that has been melted. So I'm, there, that goes in there. 
we had the foresight to turn the heat on and melt the butter. I'm real proud of myself for doing that. We are getting better at this, don't we you are. think? We are, all right. You know, I figure another 16 years or so, we ought to have this thing down pat. Okay, here is a pint that's two cups, 16 ounces, sealed for your protection of cottage cheese. This, this thing? You want what? it out of there. Oh, thanks. It's in the way, Johnson. Well, I need Try to Try and pay it. attention when the camera I'm trying, people I'm talk at you. I'm going as hard as I can. <laughs> all right, now, get all of the cottage cheese out and put it in now there. Now, take your time. We, I've done all mine. Okay. Now, I have to have, we'll have a, 16 a minute cup show. of diced salami. There it is. Dad, well, gum it. This stuff is sticking. Oh, no. Well, let me get rid of this. I think I'm just going to turn it off. I got so much stuff, I don't I feel know like what to do with, with it. it. All right, I got the salami in there. And now we got to have a, a an envelope of instant soup mix uh, for leek soup. And we'll try to... Oh, I hate that leek soup. You know, it doesn't matter what you put it in, it just leaks. Leaks, oh, give me... I'm, it, well, thank you for at least doing a relatively decent... Joke on that one. <laughs> oh, I can't get the box open. All right, now there it is. And I'll put the coupons over here so I can take them home and use them. Yes, we do. You so here goes the. Now don't get nervous. You I, can do it. I can't get it open. Just take your time. <laughs> I literally can't, Doris. Here, let me put yeah. a knife to it. There you Thank go. you. They seal that stuff up, they don't want you to use it. Well, I know. And then there's spices. This is pepper, garlic salt, and black um, and onion salt. A teaspoon of each thrown in. And now we'll mix all that up, and then I've got to break oh, a bunch dear. of eggs and beat them up. Laven. What? We have a terrible problem. What? The chicken people have done it to me, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no. They have split the breast piece. Oh, no. Now we really probably do need toothpicks or a large rope to tie this together, but I'm going to just go right on. Nothing right. is going to stop me. Well, I'm mixing all this mess up over here. God, it is a mess, too. All right. Now, let me get my chicken out the pan before it browns too much. Get on out of there. I'm tired of this. You ill-tempered pieces have been giving me a hard time, and I don't know what to do with it. All right, now, now you, you take a dozen eggs, and a you're going to break eggs? nine of them into a bowl, because you got to whip them. Talk about heart attack yell. city. Talk right. about heart attack city. I know, it's, this is just, it's awful. But I mean, we are feeding the entire group down at the Salvation Army, so this recipe makes so much, it's unbelievable. I don't know, I really honestly don't know a single family that's so big they'd have to have this much. Well, here I go, Just breaking these eggs. And yes, I know I'm, Martha Stewart says break them into a separate thing, but I'm not doing it. What does she know? Nothing. Do that's, we have a large spatula? Do we have one that's like bigger than this one? That's it. Mm. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Well. <laughs> All right, I need to turn this over. Let's take a deep breath and give it a try. I have a great big one at home. There we go. Hey! Turned well, out Larry right uses nicely. it for those plate-sized pancakes he makes for himself. Oh, every I love those pancakes. You know, Tootsie used to feed those to me when I was growing up on the farm. We were stout-hearted folks. Mm-hmm. Well, oh. as you can see, that is holding together pretty well. And this one I just put in, this is the one that has a toothpick in it, or at least it did. There it is. I hope I don't lose that toothpick. It's right in there. Miss mm -hmm. Doris okay. just gave it to me. Because if anyway, I as you can chomp see, down on it, there will be a suit. You see, you got sure. to fry those very slowly until they're real nice. I think I'm going to turn that baby up. It needs to be turned up just oh. a little bit. And in a couple of minutes, we'll show you what else you do with it. Yes, it's true, you do more stuff with it. <laughs> so, okay. Laban. Now, mine, I've got nine eggs in this bowl, oh and I'm going to whip them up. 
But my cholesterol has just gone up even standing beside. I'm going to taste this bad boy, but that's all it's oh, going to have yeah. for he me. He says that, ladies and gentlemen, but after the cameras turn off, he gobbles Now, Larry, all don't say down. that Dr. Needhawk might be watching because he does sometimes, and he will come to my house and do something terrible well, to you. Well, you know, Needhawk and I are friends I now know. that he's given me that EKG. All right, now. <laughs> We've got okay, to now into this mixture goes the eggs, the nine eggs. There's three more still to do. And now after this, I'm going to put in some, um, Hello. I'm going to put in some spinach. Here's the spinach. This is a whole thingy, a 10 ounce package of spinach. And that's going to go in here now. Good heavens, Laban. I this know, is it just incredible. goes on and on and on. Why is that still on? I thought I turned it off. Okay. I'll be out in the car when. Uh, oh, I know when this thing gets finished. When this finished. is over with, Can let me know when you're finished. I'll stuff? be in the car. Well, why don't you tell them what all's in yours? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Let me do that. Yeah, yeah. Chicken breast. So I'll tell you chicken breast. Do we have to bring you in too? Oh, my heavens, we've got to work her in here. Eight chicken breasts clean but still in par pairs. Four tablespoons of butter or margarine, eight ounces of cream cheese, a little dried thyme to sprinkle on it. And you dredge that in a cup of flour and a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese. And then you salt and pepper it when you put it in there on top of the stove. And uh, you also have some thinly sliced ham or prosciutto. Four tables teaspoons of spicy brown mustard goes in that too. And there you go. And I'll tell you what you do with it in a couple of minutes. Miss, uh, the lovely oh. Miss Thang is here. Can we bring her in or are you still? No, you still I need got... to do something okay, for you. Bring you, her in. So I mean, you know, Doris, we may not be able to I have, have time for I have this huge today. plant, uh, pan. What is it, Doris? It's not uh, 11 by 16. Yeah, it's a big pan and it needs to be greased and Edgar says use some more butter and I'm just going to use pan and I'm going to cover the bottom of it with a half a cup of grated Parmesan. So Larry, while I'm doing that, you go ahead and Okay, tell your well, story. even though this is not really absolutely positively done, I'm go I'm going to show you, huh? I'm just people talking all around. There's hardly time to do the show for people to... Come in here. I'm going to let you talk right now, and then I'll show you what... Because this needs to brown just a couple more minutes, and I'll show you what to do with it. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely Doris Ford. Hello, Doris. Hi, Doris. How are you doing? This is really cholesterol city on this show today, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, this is some butternut... I'm not getting fresh with Doris. <laughs> she does have to talk into my chestal microphone. Yeah, because we still don't have that extra mic, do we? Okay. Six thousand more dollars <laughs> if we just raise. Go ahead. Okay, this is butternut chewies from Shannon Brown of Stewart, Virginia, and it has one and a half cups of butter melted, two eggs, <laughs> two cups of light brown sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla. Did you get it? <clears throat> one and a half okay. <laughs> cups all-purpose flour, two teaspoons baking powder, and one to half a teaspoon salt, and one cup of finely chopped walnuts. And you mix this all together and spread it in a uh, nine uh, by thing, baking pan. But it is so it's feel the butter. You can see feel the butter. Look at the butter. Look, you can see I actually see a the little butter, slick on the bottom really, of it there. You can see it all over the dish. It has an awful lot of butter in it. And it smells wonderful. But it smells good. But you but need look, now you have butter fingers. <laughs> butter fingers, which right. would be a good oh, name for. Oh no, wait a minute. We shouldn't no, be we're mentioning not brand to be, names. That's right. Okay. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Well, we're going to be looking forward to those. They do smell delightful, right. Laban. Okay, now my pan has been greased and is covered on the bottom with uh, grated parmesan, not the dusty kind, grated. And now we're going to put, should I put the, let's see, let me put the breast in now. And I'll just lay them down in the bottom. It really didn't make it very clear, did it? No, it didn't. And of course, Doris was no help at all. None whatsoever. <laughs> totally worthless. Yeah. Well, Completely. I'm laying these bad boys. But we in. love her anyway and her we worthlessness. Do. Yeah. Listen to her. She's just over there gabbing over there to herself. She doesn't to her. have a mic. She's not close to anybody. But she's yapping. <laughs> I think she's. I think she's laid into Dar to Harold about something. I'm not sure. I think she's laying him out because she right. didn't like the his pants he's wearing today. All right. Now here we go with this big mixture. Oh my heavens! Of all of this stuff. It's like a, a, a big uh, old uh, mess. Thing. <laughs> it's a big old thing. My sainted mother, Louise Bond Johnson, would be 
humiliated. unhappy to see me making such a mess today. This She'd is be humiliated right. beyond belief. All right, now we're going to put all of this, spread it out into the whole pan. And, oh, I hear Doris over there. All right, but we're not finished yet. Okay. Now we got the other three eggs. Sake. And I got to beat them up pretty good. All right. And now you pour these over the top of everything. There it goes. And you know, this is just terrible. All right, now you take the rest of your grated Parmesan and sprinkle it. Well, I could do a better job with it in my hand over the whole thing. And then you're going to bake it for at least 40 minutes or until it's set, and this is going to be sort of like a, a pudding or a quiche until it's set at 375 degrees. And you just have to take this one on good faith that it will get done eventually. And there it is. And Doris, thank you. Have you Here's, given your recipe? Yeah, here, uh, no, I haven't. It's too long. Here, here is the, um, the entire finished one, and it looks real tasty. Uh, the recipe calls for a cup of long grain rice, a cup of chicken soup or stock, a cup of water, a stick of butter melted, a pint of small curd cottage cheese, a cup of diced salami pieces, an envelope of leek soup mix, uh, one teaspoon each of garlic, salt, onion salt, freshly, freshly, easy for you to say, freshly ground black pepper, 12 eggs, a package of frozen chopped spinach, uh, two tablespoons of butter for greasing the baking dish or a spray, and a half a cup of freshly grated Parmesan or R Romano and salt and pepper if you want to add it. All right, I got to show them one more quick okay. thing. After you get finished taking this out of the pan, it looks to me like there's some good gravy mm -hmm. fixings in there, don't you think? Yep. Doesn't mention anything about gravy. Anyway, you take these and you put them in a nice baking dish, and there would be eight of them. Put them in a baking dish like this and put it in the oven at 325 degrees for 45 minutes and bake it the rest of the way. Ooh. And look at that, isn't that beautiful? It really is. It is. I'm it's like... just so pretty. <laughs> but I tell you folks, let me sing you a song. It's just not enough room. I'm waiting for Johnson to sit down at the table. Well, I'm trying. I'm okay. all tangled we up We have a lot of stuff. You know what I'm going to do, Johnson? What? I'm going to cut one of these in half because I think it's just too much. That's fine. Look how huge they are. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to do. We're going to cut one in half. I'm going to take half. You're going to take half. What do you think about that? Because mm -hmm. they're mighty large. Look at that ham in there. Woo! And cream cheese. Oh, this is a... And a little bit of wild rice. I got some wild rice for you. I know how you love wild rice. There's some for you. And here's some for me. And, and there's I'm that. Give me one of those. One of Doris's. Well, how embellished. Dessert. <laughs> well, it was and is. <laughs> and will be. Oh. And I've lost them before. There it is. Okay. All right. Here's, would you like some a cider? A little apple cider. Can you believe that? How long has this been setting out on the porch, Doris? Let me see here. And, you know, Doris just has a dish for every occasion. These are lovely Halloween dishes. Well, let me try a heart attack city here. All right. Look at all those eggs frothing up. Hmm. Well, I like that. Of course, it, what's not to like? Yep. Now, I've got a piece of chicken in it. I like that. I'm going to try one little forkful. Mmm. Well, I'm dying, that's a bad word, for um, you to try mine. Because it's got that cream cheese and all that stuff in there. Look at that. Ooh, that was good. I wish I could eat all of it. Mm-mm-mm. Now, let me <clears throat> try Larry's here. Tell me what you think. Oh, I'm trying to. Mm, mm, mm. A little wild rice on the side. Mm -hmm. Now that would be an entire meal. Johnson's just mm. so delicate about it. That's really quite good. Let me cleanse my palate so I can try out this little dessert tag, which uh, Doris did. You know, that's mighty good cider. <clears throat> you know, either one of these that's recipes great. would be a major hit. I like it. Anywhere you took them. What's that? Either one of these would be a huge hit. Mm. 
And I'm telling you, mm. if, if your egg recipe didn't get you all this butter well, mm -hmm. this is fabulous. Mm. Some great, great stuff today, much to our surprise, but we love it when it is. Well, I just don't know what to say. Except Nothing. have some more. Just put some more in, in your mouth. And put some more down well, my gullet and go from there. Maybe I'll try another spoonful of this rice. I think you're going to be uh, mighty, mighty impressed. And I wish you could be here after the cameras go off to see Johnson eat every single I do not. Every bit of it. so unbearable.